Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is the fifth time I'm doing this video. And uh, I'm going to show you an easy way to dual boot manually Cache OS and Windows. Okay? So, first, we're going to hit New on this. So, if you have an empty space, like, you can go over here, you can hit Resize. You can make your window side as big, as large as you want. Okay, so if you want small for Linux, you can have small for Linux. Just leave enough space you can do stuff in, okay? Uh, we're going to hit cancel on that. Now, for this, first petition is going to be a FAT32. This is for boot, and we need to make it, let's say, let's just do 3 gigs to be safe, okay? And for the rest, hit new, select ButterFS, hit add, and that's it those are your two partitions that you need the most okay next we're gonna right click this and we're gonna name partition boot just like that that way we know what it is we could also rename it and name it Linux boot if we need to just so you know the difference between the two you're gonna select boot and ESP okay and we're gonna hit apply now launch the installer this is the button right here. You'll see this thing. And I'm going to select system MD boot. You can select grub, whatever, which one you're more comfortable with. System MD to boot is more modern and a lot faster. It's UEFI only. We need a UEFI install of cache OS and windows. Try to remember that, please. And hit next, next. And this is where the other way comes in. You can click install alongside, select your windows partition and you can choose where your EFI goes if you need to. Like if you need to, you can make a new EFI. You might have an issue if you don't, because again, uh, where is SDA1? So Windows boot is SDA1, and that has problems. SDA2 is also too small. So this way, unfortunately, it would use SDA4, which we made. So either way, you're going to want to do manual partition because again the installer is not going to understand it's not going to make one for you so click edit after selecting your partition so select sda4 hit edit yours might be named differently and we're going to select the mount point to slash boot okay sda5 is the butterfs we made we're going to be selecting this as slash which is also known as root and if we hit next we have no complaints. I'm going to click XFCE4. I'm not actually going to use it, but uh, just as an example. Enter my name and enter my password. There you go. Do not log in automatically. You can cause some issues. And there we go. This should work. This should have no issues with placing the kernels and stuff where it needs to go in the boot partition. And that is how you manually manually dual boot cache os with windows okay now downloading cache os might take some time depending on your download speed but so far we're good now i'm gonna show you how to do the alongside version here when we get back so that you can do it properly and still have a proper boot drive so bear with me. Okay, so now that this is done, we're gonna hit done after selecting restart. I'm going to do, so we're gonna go in here, enable boot menu. All right. You can also directly boot a kernel, by the way, but you're probably not gonna ever wanna do that, but I'm just letting you know that you can do that. Let's try that. There we go. So boot manager, Windows boot manager, Booting Windows. Normally, it commits a mod probe, which allows you to do it yourself. Sorry that took so long. I messed up the video driver on this, so it doesn't boot in anymore. But you're not going to do that. You're not going to have that problem. So it is what it is. So there you go. That works. We're going to force off again. Didn't want Windows anyway, so it was an easy way to break it. We're going to select the CD-ROM. We're going to push it up top. And I'm going to show you that other method. Okay. 
So that other method's just as important. And we're going to boot up normal cache again. I'll see you when the installer's up. All right, so this is how this is going to work. We're going to open up Gpartit. And all we're going to do is we're going to create the FAT32 partition. So we're going to delete this. We're going to delete this. We're going to extend this size over here, just like that. Then we're going to shrink it. I like how it says new size. How big is the last partition? It's only about a megabyte large. So resize. Free space. We want exactly, let's say, three gigs again. Resize. Done. And uh, we're going to hit apply. Okay. Great. We're going to right click this. We're going to hit new. We're going to change this to a fat 32. We're going to call it boot. Partition name boot. And we're going to hit add. Like that. Good. Great. And we're going to manage flags like this. This I'm doing this to teach you, by the way. Okay. There's going to be some people in here that says these things are unnecessary. I'm doing this to teach you. First and foremost, when making a guide, your job is to teach. Okay. And uh, where's the welcome screen? There it is. Launch the installer. There's no internet connection. Don't worry, I got this. <sighs> uh, 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 there we go. Sorry, I had to remember uh, my login for my Wi Fi. Come on, system MD boot. And once again, we're just going to skip through the installer. Next, next, next. Install alongside. Click here and drag. So, depending on the size you want, I'm going to do about half. And this partition on the end is SDA4, the one that we just made. So, we're going to choose SDA4. We're going to hit next. Uh, next. We're going to enter our name. And this should allow the alongside to work. Now, I will probably try to talk with the Cache OS developers about making it so the install alongside creates the new EFI partition because Windows creates a 100 megabyte one, which is disgustingly undersized. So that's going to do that. It's going to rank the mirrors. It's going to do the installation. And it's finished. We're going to hit done. And let's see. So it's booting up the options now. And of course, we do have to uh, let's just click this. I'll help. So device manager. All right, boot manager. So there's the Linux boot manager. There's the Windows boot manager. We can still do Linux. Great. We can reboot into interface firmware. And we can still do Windows. Uh, isn't connected or cannot be accessed. Seriously. Anyway. <laughs> I don't even think Windows knows what it is anymore. Honestly, I, I think it thinks it's Linux. And I think it thinks it's Windows. But I don't think it knows how much of one it really is. Because there is some Linux code inside of Windows now. And it's kind of funny. But yeah, there we go. We booted up Windows. Hopefully this video helped. I don't know. Honestly, I've tried to record this video so many times that I've lost count of what I've just done. Uh, but we have a Discord for support if you need it. Cache OS Discord uh, is for support on this matter as well. So uh, join either one. Join both, in fact. You know, be part of my community. Be a part of their community. Because it really helps. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe as well. That really helps in liking the video. Bye.